The white beaches of the Western Interior Seaway, a beautiful location that hides a sea of monsters just beneath the waves which crash against the coastline. Along the white sands, one of the ocean's residents has hauled herself onto the shore to complete her most important task. She is an Archelon, the largest turtle to have ever taken to the world's oceans. At 4.2 meters long and weighing close to 3 tons, she would stick out immensely if it weren't for the other female Archelon that have gathered on this long stretch of coast. They are here to lay their eggs in the soft sands, a physically demanding task that requires them to crawl out a few dozen meters and then dig out a shallow hole to lay their eggs. Our female was the first to arrive and after covering her clutch with sand, is only a few meters away from the water's edge as other females are only just beginning to haul themselves onto the beach. Once she finally pushes herself into water that is deep enough for her to swim in, she is relieved to feel weightless again. Using her long front flippers, she casually propels herself through the water. But she does not move to more open ocean. She sticks to the shallows heading to one of the various reefs that line the coast. The Western Interior Seaway covers much of North America, at this time, but the seaway itself rarely gets to a depth of more than 900 meters. This has allowed life to flourish from shoals of fish, vast stretches of coral, to the most massive of marine reptiles. The Archelon glides slowly over the various brightly colored coral, her wide form casting a brief shadow over them. Fish of all sizes and shapes crowd around the coral, performing their own daily tasks from cleaning to feeding. Further ahead, the giant turtle hears the sound of a flock of Hesperornis diving from their rocky perches into the sea to begin a day of foraging. In great numbers, they swim to deeper waters searching for prey, in more open water. But the Archelon stays in the shallows, knowing that out there are all forms of massive carnivores, from sharks to mosasaurs. Though at her size most of them don't pose a threat, she is one of the exceptionally rare few that make it to adulthood. Before reaching near full size, young Archelon are fair targets for anything larger than they are, or with powerful enough jaws to puncture their carapace. Only once they reach their full size do they know a measure of safety, and for that reason they stick to shallower waters as much as they can. Fortunately, food is never in short supply in these areas. Archelon can feed on a wide range of marine life but jellyfish are by far the easiest to catch. Archelon are one of the few creatures that feed on the stinging invertebrates, so there is little competition. As the massive turtle takes a breath of air, she is approached by a pair of elasmosaurus. The long-necked plesiosaurs look menacing, but they are harmless neighbors. Their small heads and interlocking teeth are evolved to catch slippery fish, and so both species are no threat to each other. In fact, Elasmosaurus wouldn't even feed on juvenile Archelon, so it's not uncommon to see the giant reptiles swim amongst each other. Whether they are simply ignoring the other, or they in fact feel safer around each other, is unknown. As the long-necked pair swim over the Archelon, she continues her slow swim through her sunlit home. It doesn't take long for her to come across another large marine reptile, though this one is not as friendly with her kind as the Elasmosaur. Out of the gloom comes the long jaws of a pliosaur. This massive 7 meter reptile is a top predator in the Western Interior Seaway, despite the fact that he is still not fully grown. He has come in from deeper waters for respite from the carnage that unfolds there every day, and his path leads him towards the Archelon. Sensing the potential threat, the turtle changes her course away from the pliosaur's powerful jaws. The larger reptile continues towards her, however, though it is not clear whether he intends to hunt her or not. Not wanting to take any chances, the female slows and faces the predator, twisting so she exposes the flat of her back, a target so wide even the pliosaur's jaws wouldn't fit around. Fortunately, there is no need for her to do so. The predator keeps his distance and sails past her, barely even acknowledging her presence. There is an abundance of potential prey in these waters, almost all of which are easier to kill than a full-grown Archelon. Not just because a carapace gives her an excellent defense, 
but she can also deal a lot of damage with her beak-like jaws. A bite from her could tear clean through his hide, or rip chunks out of his flippers, so the Plysaur avoids her kind as much as possible. The Archelon returns to the surface and rests for a while, absorbing the sun's rays. Out in the open, the eternal battle between predator and prey rages like a storm, but here, she and other Archelon enjoy a much more peaceful existence, a way of life that will continue long after the end of the Cretaceous, with the modern sea turtles that inhabit the oceans today. Hello fellow travellers and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down the world's largest known prehistoric turtle, Archelon. Archelon's first remains were found in 1895 and was found and described by American paleontologist George Reber Wayland. The holotype was a mostly complete skeleton, missing a skull, and Wayland named it Archelon Iskoros. With the genus name meaning first or early turtle, and the species name meaning mighty or powerful. Fortunately, a skull was found only two years later in the same location. Numerous remains would be found and more species of Archelon would be named, however most of these would be found to be their own genuses. So as of today, Archelon still only has one species attributed to it. Scientists originally thought it was closely related to the modern leatherback turtle, However, phylogenetic analysis would reveal that Archelon belongs to the Protostygia family, which is now a completely extinct order of turtles unrelated to any of the modern sea turtle species. Though its family has its origins in the late Jurassic, Archelon lived in the Campanian stage of the late Cretaceous between 80 and 74 million years ago. In life, Archelon was truly massive, with the largest found, named Brigitta, being 4.6 meters long and weighing between 2.2 and 3.2 tons, the head alone was 1 meter, and its flippers when outstretched measured 4 meters in width. Taking a look at the skull, you'll immediately notice the large hooked beak, which gives the skull its elongated triangular appearance. It was likely covered in keratin, and is thought to be more adapted for slicing than crushing. More on that later. The nostrils sit above the beak, and are more elongated and more poised forward than modern turtles. The eyes point forward as well, cementing Archelon as an obligate carnivore. The skull was held on a short neck with eight X-shaped vertebra, with powerful muscles to back up its immense jaws. The flippers of Archelon have large humeri, while the radius and the ulna are short and compact, so they would have been very strong when making the wide strokes it needed to propel itself through the water. Their flippers are most analogous to green sea turtles and loggerhead turtles than the leatherback turtle, being very long and paddle-like. This does indicate that Archelon wasn't the best swimmer when compared to modern sea turtles, coming at about middle of the road. And this likely meant that it stuck more to shallower waters, but being fully capable of long open water travel when necessary. What it did have in common with the leatherback turtle, however, is that they both lack a hard shell, instead having a protective carapace. Though it is still made up of the rib cage, with 10 ribs on each side, the majority of the carapace is covered in a thick, tough, leathery hide that still functioned as armor and likely had ridges over the back as an extra layer of defense. So why evolve this instead of having a typical shell? It may simply be to reduce weight. If the entire back was solid, it wouldn't have been nearly as buoyant and no matter how good a swimmer Archelon was, it would have sunk to the bottom like a ton of bricks. So that's the top of the animal, but what about the underside? As we can see, Archelon had what is called a plastrum line in its underbelly, but why does it look like that? With the four round pieces of bone that have multiple spine-like protrusions jutting out from them. Well, scientists believe that this is an adaptation that Archelon spent a lot of time on the seafloor. This is not to say that Archelon was a deep sea hunter, as the area it lived in, which is the Western Interior Seaway, was an inland sea that rarely got to more than a few hundred meters deep. It is also believed that Archelon spent the majority of its time in relatively shallow waters, as this is where their remains have been found. So what was it hunting? 
Going off the bottom feeding hypothesis and remembering that its beak was likely built for slicing, it's thought Archelon may have been going after soft-bodied prey. Slicing through and tearing up jellyfish and squid, as well as any fish it was able to catch. There is also the theory that Archelon's beak and skull were powerful enough to allow it to tackle hard body prey. This would work with the bottom feeding theory as it could have fed on mollusks and crustaceans as it moved along the seafloor. It's noted that there were a large number of Nautilus fossils found in the same area that Archelon was discovered in, and these may have been a common food source for the massive turtle. Of course, this is not to say that it couldn't have eaten both types of prey as the back of Archelon's jaws were blunt compared to the beak. And it's likely it would have eaten a wide range of different creatures depending on what was available to it. Like modern sea turtles, Archelon most likely had to return to land to lay its eggs, digging a nest in the sand or earth to lay their eggs before covering them and returning to the ocean. Once the eggs hatch, they would crawl out of their nest and flee into the ocean themselves. An ocean that was filled with dangerous predators from seabirds like Hesperornis, pterosaurs like Pteranodon, massive fish like Xyphactinus, and plesiosaurs like Elasmosaurus. Though adult Archelon would have been too large for many of them, they still had threats, many of them large sharks and mosasaurs, such as Squillacorax and Tylosaurus. But it is not these predators that led to the disappearance of Archelon, but the changing world it was a part of. Between 75 million and 70 million years ago, the Western Interior Seaway slowly disappeared, forming the North American continent into one solid landmass. With the disappearance of its shallow water ecosystem, and the loss of the vast stretches of coastline that they used for their nesting grounds, Archelon couldn't adapt quickly enough, and went extinct not long before the end of the Cretaceous period. Though it and every other member of its family are extinct, there are multiple species of sea turtles still swimming through the oceans today, though many are under threat, so it's important that we continue to protect these beautiful animals, so they don't end up like their giant ancestors. If you've ever had the pleasure of swimming alongside sea turtles in the ocean like I have, I'll tell you now, it's not something you'll easily forget. But what do you think of Archelon? And for my question of the week, do you believe that Archelon would go after soft-bodied prey more, or hard-bodied prey? What lesser-known extinct animal would you like me to do a breakdown on next? And until then, please like, share, subscribe, and thank you for watching.